Okay, so this is the second part of a video on Redis. Um, just going a little bit deeper into what Redis can do. And um, as we saw in the first video, I'm going to start Redis up here. I still have it set, and I only have one key changes. Write it out to disk. Um, so, the, you know, that's just the normal Redis server starting up. And it's available and it's running. So, uh, from yesterday, I mean, if if I were to Redis client and I would do something similar to set uh, test key equals one two three, and I would get test key, I would um, oops uh, get test key, I would get one two three. Um, this is on my Mac on a, on another machine, um, maybe my Redis client. Uh, um, uh, this is a, uh, um, uh, a Linux machine, um, so if I'm going to go 192.168.1.118, that's uh, my my Redis uh, um, servers or my max IP address. And if I go get test key over here, it's one two three. Now um, I also have a Linux 5.9 where I compiled it here, so um, here I'm going to um, get test key and uh, oops uh, so I'm going to connect to it and I'm going to go get test key over here on my Linux machine this one and it's one two three so there I have three clients that give me the same the same answer now um, you know it, it can do many more things than than, than just you know setting a uh, a single key I mean uh, um, you can do things like um, um, Dell delete Dell test key, um, you know, and it comes back with that. So if you now say get test key, it's gone. Um, you can do things like um, set test key test and then do a command keys star, and that will oops, keys star that will show you all the keys I have. So then we can see a test key. Or I can just say keys test star, and I have a key called test key. Um, you know, I can, uh, uh, for instance, say uh, set temp to hello world. Um, and no, if if I run keys uh, temp star, I can see. So I can get temp and I see a hello world and I can do something funky like expire temp in five seconds so now I can get temp and it's hello world get temp and it's hello world get temp and it's hello world and suddenly temp goes back to null it, it expired in five seconds you know just think of a, a how you could use that it goes further than that though it goes into things like hashes so I can for instance say hash um, and and you know just w as an example we I showed this in yesterday's video what what are all the things that um, that we can do and let me get that quickly for us today we said you know it can do things like um, you know uh, sets or hashes or lists you know we just looked at lists uh, here or key values but we can do m much more we can for instance do a um, eight set uh, my hash, uh, my key, one to hello, and um, and I can do eight set my hash my key two to world. Uh, now I can say um, something funny like eight um, uh, vowels uh, my hash. And there's the value stored in there, in, in, in that list or in that um, uh, hash over there. So, you know, lists, for instance. I can um, L push, push to the left of a list, push to the left to our list word hello. Push to the right of a, of, of a list, uh, our list, the thing world. So I push something to the left of a list, I put something on the right of a list, meaning at the end of a list, 
And now list length, our list, maybe that is two. So um, give me the, 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 the uh, uh, wh what the values are, range, um, list range, our list zero to two, and there's the wo hello world. Or let's um, left uh, push into the list, um, our list, uh, let's push a Z, um, oops, uh, left push into there, let's left push uh, H, and let's right push A, A. So, um, oh, sorry, not right push, right push A. So now, um, list len of our list will uh, results in five. So, um, if we wanted to get that uh, uh, values, L range, um, our list zero to five, and there it is. But now I can start sorting them. So I can say sort for me our list alphabetically and there it's sorted. So as you can see there's, there's many more of these type of things that we can of course um, do to 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 these uh, 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 to uh, in Redis. It's not just a key value it has lots more to do with that. So um, you know I, I, I'm going to set up quickly here a, a, a slave and you know currently up to this point I've really run Redis in uh, um, you know this format there's a just a server and uh, we're, we're querying the server so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to create a uh, a client or a slave as it's known so I'm going to create a slave and this server is going to um, replicate its data down to the slave. So, um, and in this case, I'm, you know, I'm going to go on to this machine. So, let me go uh, edit my Redis.conf here. So, there's my Redis.conf on the slave, and this is in my Linux 6.4, and I'm going to say, hey, you're a slave of my uh, my Mac. Um, on that port and I'm going to say that um, you know you are also a uh, uh, um, and you can serve sli stale data you can go read up on this and you're a read only list so um, okay so I'm gonna start this uh, a server and you can immediately see it starts up and then it does a master slave sync and um, you can see the master saying hey I've got a slave now so now from this point onwards, um, you know, where I used to, um, uh, um, I, you know, I could connect to the, the master and say uh, keys, for instance, and I could say get viv key, and that would be hello. If I uh, quit out of here and I say, you know what, I'm just going to connect to the local server, and you'll see that it's now connected to 127.001, and I say get viv key, I get the same hello. So um, uh, um, you know, if I go onto another client, let's go onto uh, onto this client, which is my um, little uh, Linux machine running over there, uh, my Linux 5.9, and I'm connected to the master, and I'm going to say set viv viv key to world. So I'm going to oops, <laughs> not get sorry, um, set viv key to world. If I now come uh, uh, to a slave and I get viv key, it's world. So it is sort of filtered down. So in, in, in this world, um, it has, um, you know, I've, I've put a key in here and the database is over here. So um, it's, it's, it's sort of persisting it to the database. Well, it's not sort of, it's uh, the server is persisting to the database, but it's sent it to the slave. So whatever, if even if you change the value on the server, it goes down to the slave. So how this is then designed is that you can create uh, uh, many slaves to a to a master server, 
and they would all um, do something like um, this so um, you know your clients can sit and, and hit these slaves and get values what you can do though is I can't be on a slave and then say uh, set uh, verb key uh, to um, test again and it's going to say no that's read only so um, your, your slaves you can make them writable but it doesn't filter back so y you end up with uh, 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 you know uh, sort of just values that's that's on that slave <laughs> and uh, um, you know but but the, the main um, point behind this is you have this master and we no longer call it a master maybe uh, just a server maybe we call it the master server and then with its database and when it comes up it sends to the slaves and and the nice thing here is the slaves can have slaves you, you know and 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 so it filters all the way down so um and now it becomes hugely scalable where um slaves can have slaves can have um um you know uh, and it and it, and it just goes wild from there so um you can start building your whole infrastructure so where this thing really comes in handy is uh, uh you know if if you were to think of something like a, a web application and just this is just a a use case so let's say if a guy logs in and uh when he logs in you're gonna go and um, write his a uh, um, his login. Let's call it session. Let's you go write that into um, the master server. So that's the login. Now it's gonna hit some pages over here. Page one, and you want to know that, or 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 page two, and there's some different functions on page two, and there's some different functions on page three. Um, but each one of these you want to know whether this guy is valid you're going to do some authentication Well, instead of talking to the master maybe um, you know these guys can be configured to start calling the slaves or or, or you know or one slave it, it doesn't really matter uh, um, you know they could all be calling the same slave and um, but your you know your next server might be calling a, uh, a different slave but you know this is uh, a read optimized now so your web app you wrote once in there and maybe you set a timeout on it or a expire on it and now you know all your other functions everywhere where, where you have a uh, another let's call this your app server and the app server needs to check maybe the app server will call this slave to see if that guy's um, you know his original token is still valid and maybe you have uh, many app servers over here doing all sorts of uh, uh, things but they could all be talk oops, uh, they could all be talking to um, different slaves uh, still checking the same you know guys um, you know the same guys original login so th that way you can now start scaling very very big um, uh, you know from from a master where you wrote it in and you can have all these slaves all over and you know in, in, in this world as we know there's the master it's still running I'm connected uh, to the slave and I'm gonna get the key and it's world and suddenly um, something unforeseeable happens and the master dies um, well in this world you'll you'll start seeing messages hey my master's gone away but it doesn't mean it's gone the, the, you know these guys the, the slave can still read these values so even in this world where, where the master has died the slaves are still active and still you know presenting their data to the application um, uh, um, and, and it's and it's not gone so you know when when the master comes back online um, like in, um, I'm gonna bring it bring it back up We'll see that uh, the slave stops complaining, but you know, to the client, uh, it's still there. Uh, you know, nothing's changed. It doesn't know that the master went away and 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 died or or anything like that. So um, 
um, uh, another, uh, you know, so that, that that's that. And the, the last thing I just want to talk about is maybe publish and subscribe. So, you know, you can sit on a, on a, on a client, um, let's sit on, on this client, which is on the, on the slave. And I can say, um, well, um, let me uh, subscribe to a channel called test. So, um, and then I can go to this machine and I'll connect to the master and I will say publish to the channel test the word hello. And we will see there that the slave receives it. So I publish to the master, I publish to the channel called test and the slave that subscribes to that received the message hello. So in that world wh what it really means is I can have a publisher here who um, publishes data to the master. So it sits there and pumps data in there and down the bottom here maybe I can have a uh, app and a, uh, another app and another app and they all subscribe to slaves to listen to messages. So when I publish something over here all of these guys will get the message that something uh, has been published. So again in that world you're creating a huge infrastructure of publish uh, um, and subscribe. So uh, it, it, it really is very powerful um, and um, uh, um, you know and, and that way you can you can really just build this whole infrastructure um, around just what Redis is um, and persist it to a database and when that goes down and it comes back up all of that data is synced between all these slaves everything you publish down the bottom goes down everything you write goes down um, it really is, is is very powerful. So that's the the, the, the main thing and in, in, in the next video I will maybe create a little application that implements this kind of thing uh, to a master and a slave and I'll, and I'll do it on, on Amazon Cloud and just give some idea of, on how that works. Well, um, thank you.